Greetings in the name of the Lord. Welcome to the Hour of Truth Ministry. Our organization mission is to improve the well-being of people in order to continue making a difference as inspired by the life of Jesus Christ. We do not only preach the good news to people, but we also have programs to tackle crime, disease, ignorance, poverty, and racial injustice. Matthew 16, 24-25 Delosian 5, 21-23 Colossians 1, verse 6-8 This message brings about controversial issues uh, that is facing America. This message talks about the culture wars that we face globally, not just in America, but globally. Um, the message is titled about face, and the message will be brought to you by Minister D. Robinson Sr. M.A. I want to tell you about a little story that someone passed on to me and I, I kind of felt that this is something that goes along with the message today. Lord, prop us up on our leaning side. Every time I'm asked to pray, I think of the old fellow who always prayed. Lord, prop us up on our leaning side. After hearing him pray that prayer many times, someone asked him, why he prayed that prayer so frequently? And he answered, well, sir, you see, it's like this. I got old bun out back. It's been there a long time. It was stood a lot of weather. It's gone through a lot of storms, and it stood for many years. It's still standing. But one day I noticed it was leaning to one side a bit, so I went and got some pine poles and propped it up on its leaning side so it wouldn't fall. Then I got to thinking about that and how much I was, it was like an old bum. I've been around a long time. I was through a lot of the life storms. I was through a lot of bad weather in my life. I was through a lot of hard times and I, I'm still standing too. But I find myself leaning to one side from time to time. So I ask the Lord to prop us up on our leaning side. Because I figured a lot of us get to lean at times. Sometimes we get to leaning towards anger, leaning towards bitterness, leaning towards hatred, leaning towards cussing, leaning towards a lot of things that we shouldn't. So we need to pray. Lord, prop us up on our leaning side so we will stand straight tall again to glorify the Lord. If you stay at this bond for a long time, he said, you will see who will help us stand straight and tall again. You will see Jesus. Today's message is titled About Face. Today, culture war seems like it is the next war to rock societies globally. Here in America, the civil war can be seen as a culture war among kinsmen. Now today, it can be seen as governments, entities, institutions, ethnicities, groups, just to name a few. What can be done to bring about peace? What can be done to bring about commonality instead of differences? Let's start with an about face, which means turning back the clock to look at our history as a country, as a nation. My three points are living in dark days, being conformed and culture wars. My first point is living in dark days. We are living in dark days 
where the male dominant leaders are fighting and supporting an agenda that seeks to repeal laws that give women to forbid women the equality and shared government powers. There are some women who have decided to work for the other side of the aisles by campaigning to set back the progress of women if the price is right. I'm quite sure you know a few of them that fits this criteria. Let's switch gears here for a moment about the same-sex marriages which many churches seem to be against in redefining period of American history. Before America was born across the waters in Europe, the church was facing immortality issues among its clergymen and lay persons that had accumulated tremendous amount of wealth, something like 80 to 90 percent of all European wealth. That was an outcry from community. That was an outcry from governments that felt like the church had strong on society and they needed a change. Priests, the lay persons were praying on the innocent children and women in this age in record numbers. But yet held up the cloth of God and Jesus Christ as they sold authority to do and to be whatever they wanted to be and not subject themselves to the laws of the land. But the truth is, they were wrong. The invention of the printing press was invented in 1440. Prior to the printing press being invented, people were little worldwide in record numbers, relying on signs and symbols as a way of life. But Gutenberg invented the printing press of Germany and it allowed books to be printed in record numbers and people will begin to educate themselves and learn about the different things in the world around them. The conditions for the service and the pleasure were so bad that the families could not afford to pay their debt and resorted to selling or giving their children away to the church and creating what was known as orphanages or poor houses. In the 13th century, the church was in the middle of a sexual mortality scandal that rocked the church and threatened its existence. During the 14th century, Martin Luther and others laid the groundwork for what is known as the Protestant Reformation and the exit to America. And followed that was an Enlightenment period is marked by the increasing imperialism, scientific rigor, and reductionism along with the increased question of religious orthodox. And here you see, standing before you, a non-denominational church created and ordained by God to reach out to those that are spiritual. We preach to those that are Christian and who have lost their way, but it's most we find ourselves in a most difficult situation trying to preach to Christians that already have adopted what they are willing to accept and not accept. Moving back along to the message, the Quakers and the Pilgrims, dark history included harsh and unfair treatment of certain people, accused of witchcraft, and they were tortured by being burned at the stake. They used torture equipment, they hanged them, they drowned them and tried to convert them to detour from their immortal, immoral behavior. It appears to be difficult for all denominations to escape their dark history when it's embedded into their way of life. And institutional justice, but not often seen in the light, but in the darkness. 
and the laws that uphold unfair practices. Same on you, pretending like you are innocent. This is partly what helps create America's social norms and other thoughts, which were a major influence of American philosophy on control and order to remain sovereign as a country, as a nation. But get this, regardless of a person or where a person comes from, they also bring their way of life. And that oftentimes run into conflicting values in their new place of residence. Therefore, if a person had no values and principles before their acculturation, then it is highly unlikely that they would develop new ones. The only thing that is constant in our universe is change. But it means resistance because people are not are unwilling to adopt. As we turn our Bibles to Genesis 19 and 30, and it reads, Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountain, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He was with his two daughters, lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father's old, and there's no man around here to lie with us. As is in the custom all over the earth at that time. Let give our father to drink wine and then lie with him and preserve our family line through our father. Incest was present even after God had warned Sodom and Gomorrah of his intentions to destroy the city if they did not change their ways. Let the truth be told. Human beings are unique creatures with commonality and differences. Talents, gifts that are defined, that helps to define who they are from one another. Today we live in a world where gender differences is a defining factor, which helps to define how she, how he or she should conduct themselves according to the free mandates that they should follow through out their lifestyle, life cycle. It is morally wrong because those gifts and talents should be subjective rather than objectively defined by others as being wrong because their behavior has always been present but not widely accepted by all even as we read the story a lot even as we read the history of America before the West was won in Genesis 9 and 22 Ham, the father, came, saw his father nakedness, and told his two brothers outside. In this verse, Ham had sexual intercourse with his father, and then went and told his two brothers. Therefore, to make my point here, sexual immortality, and even today, as community tried to define or redefine or water down the Hebrew scripture that means, that meant or it means, it is omitted, and then we try to uphold it as being forbidden by God. So which is it? Is it right? Is it morally right? Is it morally wrong? You can't be both. You have to choose a side. But according to the history of the word, it had always been present. So it's not that God wasn't aware of things that just wasn't right. It's just that he tried to correct it through man but was not able to correct it, and therefore, it's still present. So does that mean that it's okay with him, or does that mean that all judgment is set aside for God and Jesus Christ? Good question. Sexual, sexuality was present in ancient Greece. The Roman Empire, the early morning Holy Roman Catholic Church, which continued to wrestle with these issues and even in others as the biggest sexual immortality scandal as perpetrators, but yet they are against same-sex marriage and Planned Parenthood. But it seems more like an oxymoron than being anti. 
Every pro and anti campaign has an enemy, for instance. Jesus had you and Peter. Iniquities and self doubt appears to be detrimental to him, leading up to the Garden of Gishman. Even in the Garden of Gishman and leading up to the cross on Mount Calvary. And his ultimate fate at the hand of his accusers, Pontius Pilate, the Romans. Caesar. You see, we have a Judas and a, Pete, and a Peter in all sectors of life, and they work both sides looking for angles to keep whatever power has been gained and are more willing to offer their services for a price. It is these kinds of people that keeps the progress, the aggressive, the progressive and the visionaries from making real change or simply being change makers. It's these people that keep progress and visionaries from making real change or simply being change makers. That was correction. Satan works 24 seven days a week seeking out lost souls that are hurting and feeling abandoned by God, always willing to be of assistance. Of course, in a change for your soul and a limited time of service rendered. As you open up Bibles to Ephesians 6 and 12, St. Paul is speaking here in verse 6. He says, Our struggles are not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authority, against the powers of darkness, world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. I will help comes in many styles and fashion, just the way we ordered them. Just the way we ordered them. Chew on that for a minute. Just the way we ordered them. We live in a fast-paced environment where we want things a certain way. We want them right now. We're willing to pay a price, even for custom-made services. Point number two, being conformed. Conformity is a type of social influence involving a change in belief or behavior in order to fit in with a group. Our known or hidden enemy are able to steal our cannons and tear down our walls of defense when we are in our comfort zone. It may be the very people we trust and have known all our lives that seek to destroy the cornerstones that symbolize our life work. As St. Peter explains, therefore put on the arm of God so that when the days of evil come, you may be able to withstand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2 reads, It is actually reported that there is sexual mentality among you, and of a kind that does not occur even among pagans. A man has his father wife, and you are proud. A man has your father wife, and you are proud. But we're willing to pay a price for the things that we are we want. Shouldn't you rather have been filled with grief and have put out your fellow and put out of your fellowship the man who did this? I totally agree. If it is outside the church doctrine, but if the person, if it is within the church doctrine, then you should have disfellowshipped him. But if the person is not a member of that church, the action taken by the other does not apply. Satan has been roaring this earth, roaming this earth before Adam and Eve were thought into existence. Therefore, there may be many things, people, soldiers, and followers, that compete to belong to religious, financial, social, economic, as well as other institutions without being marginalized because of who they are and what they believe. I too feel as though my mission has put me on a blacklist. That people see me as being outside of what they consider the will of God, outside of what they consider acts and examples of Jesus Christ. But I beg the difference. Because I was chosen for the position. It's not something that I, I chose. 
God chose me. I didn't choose it. If I had my way, I would choose to roam the streets. I would choose to be in the world and not out of the world. I have to deal with the world because of my mission and my purpose. It's to bring about change. It's about the well-being of others, to educate others about those that are seeking to do harm to them in any type of way and to bring about light to those who seek to do injustice, those who seek to do harm to the lessons of the kingdom. That's my mission. Jesus Christ and the pioneers of civil rights, civil rights and human rights, such as America fallen civil rights leader, Martin Luther King Jr. paid the ultimate price of death for a better world without discriminatory practices against one's right to choose what is best for them. The church needs to clean up its temple that has become defiled and unclean and uncleanness before it can speak openly or deny or forbid sexual immortality of same-sex couples from the same rights given heterosexual couples as being the sole will of God. God is a good, righteous, loving, caring God that is merciful and forgiving only if we seek, seek his, his troops and not rely on it being offered free. Get in where you fit in and establish your boundaries and respect those of others although they may or they might be different from you. They will continue to be present throughout humanity like the two peas in a pot. My third point here is culture wars. My final point. Culture wars is defined as being a struggle between two sets of conflicting cultural values. In America, an American uses of the term culture war is used to claim that there is a conflict between those values considered traditional, considered to be traditionalist or conservative, and those considered progressive or liberal. Ephesians 6, 14, 15 stands firm. Then with the belt of truth, buckle around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet filtered with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's Paul speaking now. Say the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In Romans 12, 2, Apostle Paul writes, Do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world, but be conformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God will is as a Christian. It is good, it is pleasing, and the perfect will of God and Jesus Christ. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the hammer of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We shall be speaking of those that do good acts, regardless of sexual preferences, disability, race, color, creed. We know as believers in the Trinity and non-believers that are still searching for answers. Regardless of what humanity believes, true judgment is reserved for the redeeming himself. The Hebrew Bible in the book of Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 1 through 7, St. Paul is addressing a letter wrote to him by the church leaders of Corinth on marriage and makes some interesting points on what he believed to be true based on his understanding of the word of God. Now for the matter you wrote about, it is good for a man not to marry, but since there is so much immortality, 
Each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise his wife to a husband. The wife's body does not belong to her alone but also to a husband. In the same way the husband's body does not belong to him but also him alone but also to his wife. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Prayer. So any decision that we make, we must pray on that. We, will not, we must not rush to defend something without praying first. Then come together again so that Satan will not attempt you because of your lack of control. So Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So many of us rush to judgment without praying on it and asking God to give us a sign or to speak through us what his will is. But we rely on Satan to make that call for us. So when we are for something or when we are against something, we really are for it because we really have not had the proper guidance and training and solitude necessary to make that call or to make that judgment or to make that decision. All people, places, and things in the universe, I say this as a concession, not as a command. He said it as a concession, not as a command. So he wanted to keep the peace. He didn't want to say God command you to do this, but he did it in order to keep the peace. Because he knew that those that was practicing sexual immortality were against husband and wife because they wanted whatever they wanted when they wanted it. So therefore, in order to keep the peace in the church, this is what he suggested. All people, places, and things in the universe and beyond are of God but yet not of him. But they must coexist as part of the puzzle that defines humanity as we know it. Look at our history. Look at the history of the world to get a better understanding that what you are for or against have historical roots and they must be recognized in order to end the culture wars. I do not like putting but that does not mean I try to convince others to do the same or respect the fact that there are many others that love it. Take a moment and think about what you like and what part of your life is influenced by others rather than oneself. Now that you have done an about face, do not drop the ball but stay in the game of life which is filled with commonality and differences. The two fences that separate us from reaching shalom or right relationships with Christians, non-believers, God, and Jesus Christ. Find your way, offer the same quality to others as you would for yourself and your family. It is not their fault, it is just the way it is. And we cannot convert them to the truth by de denying them feelings and beliefs of what they believe is morally right. Or wrong, but help them achieve equality because if you were not, who would clean the sins from under the church copper? May God and Jesus Christ bless you and keep you forever in His heart. This message was brought to you, this powerful message was brought to you by Minister D. Robinson Sr. I hope you enjoyed this message. I hope you got something out of this message as, as I did. You know, it's kind of funny when you sit here, you, you give a sermon, you give an editor, and you preach it, and it's not how I felt, heartfelt. But it is who I am, it's who I become. I have friends that are not Christians, that are living on the other side of what many call immortality, bad behavior. But they're people, they're human, and they have feelings, and I respect that. Not as a pastor, I'm a man that wear many caps. I wear many hats. And at times I have to be conscious of what I have to wear in any given moment. So I see people as people. 
not as Christians, not as non-Christian, but as people, and try to look at them as people. If you like to listen to more of my sermons, you can listen to them at sermon.net slash Minister D. Robinson Sr. You can also visit our home webpage at OurTruthMinistryInc.com and take a look at what we're about, our doctrine, and also look at some of the programs that we implement. If you like to sow a seed, feel free to go to our homepage and, and, and make a donation to keep this ministry going and strong. I write about different things and issues that are facing America and the world. And I can't do it alone. I want to thank you for listening and tuning in to Our Truth Ministry.